doctor by training, but I've primarily built my career through the pharmaceutical industry, uh, carrying out various roles within the industry. I've lived and worked uh, outside of the country for about 12 or so years. Most of that time I spent in the UK and a bit of that time I spent in the US. Uh, I started off as a research doctor with uh, GlaxoSmithKline, focused on diseases of Africa primarily, and then moved on to other roles which included government affairs for Africa, and more immediately, uh, general manager of the GlaxoSmithKline business in East Africa. And that's where I come from. Uh, I always wanted to come back to Kenya. Bulk of my career has been living in winter countries um, and uh, working uh, uh, under very different circumstances. So this working with the Nairobi Hospital presents an amazing opportunity for me to be able to serve uh, not just my colleagues, doctors, nurses, uh, support staff of this hospital, but also to serve our nation because this hospital uh, is significant not to Kenya alone, but actually uh, to the region, Eastern Central Africa. So very delighted to be here and uh, very excited about where we can take it. Uh, the place I come from, the last 14 years of my career, I did work for a big national, multinational company, but the thrust or the focus of all the roles I played was on improving healthcare in Africa. And the focus on bringing, was on bringing everyone along. So actually, I'm coming with this job, I'm coming at it from a, a different spectrum. So I'm you know, on the top end of the scale now. But I'm a big believer and a firm believer in one of the president's agenda, which is universal health coverage. I have spoken to a lot of our staff. They're just people like you and me who have you know, their family and relatives uh, using both this hospital and other hospitals. And they are just as concerned about how Kenyatta Hospital is doing as they are concerned about how Nairobi Hospital is doing. Um, so I do believe that with you know, the team in the Nairobi Hospital, the future that we are looking at, we will not just deliver quality healthcare as we have always done in this facility, but also be a contributor to the national agenda on universal healthcare because we don't live in a vacuum. This hospital has, in my view, the best medical brains in Eastern Central Africa concentrated here. I think there is an opportunity for those brains to be uh, brought to the table in the discourse around how we bring everyone along with healthcare. Not just from a CSR perspective, but from a thought partnership perspective. Uh, so going forward, I hope to uh, galvanize colleagues from uh, this institution and create those platforms for them to have a voice in where the health of the nation is going. And I'm very sure His Excellency will appreciate uh, that level of support if well coordinated, you know, to support his universal health care agenda. So I think that's just one example. And as I said, I've only been here five minutes. So over time, I hope I can come up with more ideas on how we really plug into the national health agenda. This is a, a moment of crisis, Marcy, and one thing that I will say is when we come out of this, we are entering a new world order where pandemics like this will be more and more common. And preparedness for pandemics like this will be paramount for our survival, not just as a nation, but actually as a global population. What you see is the coronavirus uh, pandemic testing the resilience of different health systems across the world. And you will be able to see where health systems work and where they don't. We're going to see, you know, how strong or weak our health systems are. Coming out of this, I do hope that, number one, globally, we realize the importance of universal health coverage. It is not enough for America or for uh, Europe to have good health systems while the rest of the world doesn't. You know, the viruses like this cross bo don't discriminate borders, they cross in and they test your system. Uh, so that collaboration, global collaboration towards a universal health agenda will be probably more clear coming out of this. 
Um, and I think just generally, you know, as a nation, um, it provides opportunity to galvanize around that agenda for us as a country and take it more seriously and really make robust steps towards progress for us as a country, but also hopefully for our region because our neighboring borders, whatever happens across our neighboring borders quickly impacts us. It was a very uh, rigorous interview process, which in all honesty, I didn't think I'd, I'd go through because Kenya is, is a country in Africa that's full of talent. There are lots of talented people who could do this job. But I believed that uh, the board wanted to get the best person for the job. Um, I, I did the best I could through the interview process, presenting my prior experience. And as fate will have it, I was the one who was best matched for the job at this point in history. What I bring on board is an experience largely from a very, uh, a relatively different environment. You know, I, as I said, I worked in, in Europe and the US for most of my career. And I worked for one of the leading pharmaceutical companies, GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, these companies are run like small developed nations uh, in terms of budgets. They operate with very big budgets and in terms of governance structures. The key things that I bring uh, from the experience working in that environment, number one, and which is very important for me, is uh, good governance structures uh, and decision-making making matrices, clear decision-making mat matrices, which is a characteristic of the environment that I come from. And working with the current board, I'm sure we're going to bring that into Nairobi Hospital over time. Number two is visionary leadership. In the roles that I had uh, with the pharmaceutical sector, I had the good opportunity of driving a vision for Africa for GSK uh, and uh, where investments were made uh, on that vision. And uh, the experiences gained from doing that will play out in my role uh, with the Nairobi Hospital. I also had a good opportunity to develop talent while I worked for GSK. The leadership team that reported into me when I was general manager for GSK are now leaders in their own rights in this country, I'm proud to say. You know, uh, the general manager of K GSK Kenya now uh, was part of my team. The immediate general manager of AstraZeneca in East Africa was part of my team. Uh, the East Africa uh, Medtronics general manager was also part of my team, just to mention a few. So I am big on developing talent and helping people be the best they can to grow our institution and uh, contribute to our country. So that's, I think, what I can bring to this role. I, I am an avid, well, I'd like to believe I'm, I'm a, an avid runner. I run uh, regularly. I've done it since I was uh, a teenager. Um, my lifelong ambition is to run a marathon. I'm at 21 kilometers now, and uh, I do hope that one day soon before I'm too old, I can uh, achieve that ambition. I have three lovely kids. I have my wife and three lovely children. Uh, that is something else I, I really enjoy doing. So between leaving uh, employment with my former employer and coming here, uh, I took some time out to spend with my family, my wife and my kids. And uh, that was one of the best things I've done uh, in the last many, many years. Um, my kids are still very young, so you know they require. They take a lot of. It takes a lot of energy to hang around them, but a big, big blessing for me. People generally mean well. If you lead them by creating an environment that allows them to be the best that they can, you get the best out of them. If you create an environment that doesn't do that, then you get everything and anything in between. Um, and, and that's the premise I always start from. I've been extremely lucky to hold various positions of leadership, either we, within this country or outside of this country, where I've interacted with people across socioeconomic echelons and across cultures. And, and that is a fundamental truth that I have seen. Uh, leaders have a big role to play in how people, the culture that people develop and how people relate to each other. So even as I step in this role, I'm acutely aware that that is a responsibility that I will have to carry on my shoulder, working very closely with the board that appointed me 
to bring a, a culture in our institution that empowers uh, our people uh, to be the best they can. And, and on that point, I will actually again reiterate, the biggest asset a country has or a company has are its people. It's not the roads and bridges and everything. Those are important. But if you don't invest in your people, then you lose out a lot.